check, check, check. What's happening, people? This is Nocturnal. Nocturnal Thoughts. Welcome to my channel. Today's video. Errol Spence versus Sean Porter. Part 2. Um, here's what I think about it. First of all, I think it would be a good rematch. Um, of course, I would like to see Errol Spence um, take on Terrence Bud Crawford. Um, to be honest, you know, I don't think there are any bad welterweight fights out there right now, man. You can get Terrence Bud Crawford versus Manny Pacquiao. You can get uh, Sean Porter versus um, Terrence Bud Crawford. You can get Errol Spence versus um, Danny Garcia. You can get uh, Terrence Bud Crawford versus uh, Keith Thurman and so on and etc. You know what I'm saying? I think right now in the welterweight div division, it's just it's just popping right now. Anybody at the top, fight anybody at the top, it's going to be nice to see that. But anyways, you know, Errol Spence just fought Sean Porter over the weekend and uh, they're still buzzing. You still get some people saying that, um, you know, Errol Spence was exposed, um, which I deaf to the fake. Um, I watched uh, Mayweather's uncle did his interview in, in the Mayweather's boxing camp and majority is common sense. Errol Spence won the first fight and at the most people could say it was a draw up until the 11th round knockdown, right? So it's just common sense. Anybody with eyes can see uh, legitimately Errol Spence won that fight, hands down, man down. But the rematch, I want to tell y'all one quick little story and give y'all one quick little movie analogy and um, tell you what I would think about a rematch between Errol Spence and Sean Porter right so first of all we all would like to think that we know what would happen in a rematch but nobody knows what would happen in a rematch this is boxing and as the saying goes anything can happen in boxing to say um Sean Porter has a chance in a rematch. It's obvious. Oh, of course. Of course Sean Porter has a, a a potential to win the rematch. Or else why would we want to see it? Why would we want to see it if we would... You know, I'm, I'm starting to sound pretty redundant and repetitive because I already said this before. The reason why we watch boxing is because we don't know what would happen. You know what I'm saying? We might think we know what's going to happen, but we don't know. And there is a difference. There is a huge difference between thinking you know something and then knowing something. And I'm going to give you a quick little childhood story to explain myself. Back in the day, when I was probably about eight years old, so this was back in 88. I give it even a couple more years. Maybe I was 10. You know what I'm saying? So this was 1990. I had a buddy. It was my older brother's friend, but I used to hang out with him. His name was Tamarcus. And uh, I was hanging out in his backyard playing basketball. I mean, he had the basketball hoop on top of the garage, right? And in his backyard, he had a dog pen. He had like four chihuahuas. Chows, that's what it was, not Chihuahuas, Chows. Chihuahuas is the little Chiquito Taco Bell dogs. Now he had four Chows. Those were the little purple tongue little dogs that looked like lions to me back in the days. I thought they was like little miniature lions. He had like eight Chows. Four of them they kept at the house and then four of them they kept at this tire shop and they were like security or they, they, they you know, they watched, they protected he had a little auto shop, little tire shop uh, around the way. Then he had the other four there. Then he had a, a Doberman Pinscher in the backyard 
uh, behind the fence. But he had a little dog pen that had like four chows back there, right? One day, me and Demarcus back there playing basketball, and this little stray white cat came back there. And, you know, Demarcus was probably about 12, I was 10. Or either he was 10, I was 8. I don't remember exactly, right? But we both thought the same thing. Let's see what would happen if we threw this cat behind the fence of this dog pen, right? <laughs> Yo, yeah, that's that's what the first thought that came to our mind. If Demarcus was oldest and it was his house, so you know. It, it, it was it was up to him to get this cat we we chased this cat and we grabbed this cat somehow and Demarcus grabbed it and he threw it over the fence <clears throat> and the cat somehow jumped climbed the fence and jumped into a tree and we was like damn that was quick that mug got out of there quick right to Marcus was like I'm gonna catch this cat and throw him in his pen and I'm like skeptical cuz I'm thinking they know where you gonna catch this cat again you know what I'm saying the, the cat was up in this tree to Marcus climbed the fence got in the tree grabbed his cat I was amazed I was like damn I can't believe this cat didn't just dip but he grabbed his cat right he threw it into the dog pen for the second time. And I'm going to tell you what. All four of those childs pounced on this cat. And within seconds, this fluffy white cat turned red. And we was in Atlanta, so we had that red clay dirt. But it was a combination of dirt and blood. And this cat, this live cat, went completely limp and lifeless in a matter of seconds. It was, it wasn't traumatizing, but it was an epiphany moment for me, man. Like I said, I was a kid, but as soon as I, as soon as I seen this cat get mauled and killed, it was like a realization, something that I just knew and you know what I found out that that day I found out that if you throw a cat into a dog pen full of dogs that that cat is going to get killed now <laughs> I know a lot of people is like, yeah, of course. Even when I was eight, I knew that. But until you see it, it's a difference between thinking you know something and when you see something, you know something and you feel it. It's, it's a complete different understanding. So, we think we know what will happen in a rematch between Sean and Errol Spence right but we don't know now of course Sean Porter has a chance but do I think Errol Spence is going to take that rematch absolutely absolutely I think that he, he definitely won the fight the first fight and he fought Sean's fight he out brawl a brawler I'm gonna give you an analogy or a different scenario I'm gonna give you a movie um, equation Sean Port not Sean Porter but showbiz the adult when before the first fight he was saying uh, he was comparing Sean Porter victory would be within uh, comparison to uh, Rocky Balboa Part 1, right? 
Well, like I said, that's the movies, not reality. But let's look at the movies. In Rocky Part 2. Because in Rocky Part 2, Apollo Creed, he decided he wanted to rematch um, at Rocky Balboa because he felt like he, he was getting hate mail. All of, all of his fans were, you know, calling him a bum and saying that he carried Rocky and that it was a fake win. And, you know, he was getting all this hate mail and, 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 and it got to him. You know what I'm saying? His wife was like, why you just can't let it go? And he's like, you just don't get it. You know what I'm saying? It was his image was tarnished. So he, he told, he, he made the fight. He made the, the announcement that he was going to rematch Rocky. And his big thing was, in the first fight, I was playing with uh, Rocky. I don't know if y'all remember Rocky Part 1, but the first fight, Rocky uh, Apollo came out there. And he was basically showboating to the crowd, and he was, you know, doing a lot of, a lot of joking and gesturing. He was, he was, he was pop shotting. He was boxing, but he was also, you know, grabbing them and waving to the crowd and playing to the crowd because it was a showcase fight. You know, he was, he was fighting somebody out of his class. He just didn't realize that Rocky had that heart and that eye of the tiger and that dog. And he and he started beating him up to the ribs, and it turned into a real fight. But Apollo said, "No, the second time I ain't playing. I ain't coming in there joking around. I ain't coming in there trying to box and all this. What I'm gonna come in there and do is I'm gonna bring that dog in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in there and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna beat this dude the way I posed posed to beat him the first time if I would have took him seriously, right? And he played into Rocky's hand the second fight." He didn't box him. He tried to out brawl the brawler. And he lost the second fight in the movie. Right? Even it was the twelfth round. Even when he boxed him, he brought him, he boxed, him, he brought him. But in the twelfth round, he had the fight. And what did this corner man say? Just stay away from him. All you gotta do is stay away from him and you are still the champion. But Apollo had too much pride. And he tried to go in there and slug it out. He tried to brawl with the brawler in the 12th round. And so as the story goes, they both knocked each other down and only one of them got back up and it was Rocky Balboa, right? Now, if you think of that as Errol Spence versus Sean Porter, that's not the case. Errol Spence didn't go in the first fight trying to showboat to the audience and playing around. And this is no disrespect to Terrence Bud Crawford. Because I have nothing but respect for Terrence Bud Crawford. But that's more like what you see from Terrence Bud Crawford. When he has somebody that he completely outclass in the ring. He starts to do a lot of playing around. Sticking out his tongue and patting him on the head. And you know what I'm saying? Sticking his tongue out to the audience and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? That's not how Errol Spence took on Sean Porter. Errol, Errol Spence, and I repeat, said I'm going to prepare for a rough, tough 12 round grueling fight and that's what he was prepared for and that's what he did he said if the knockdown is there I'm going to try to take it and in the 11th round he tried to take the knockout right but he always said I'm going in there for a tough dog fight and that's what he showed was a tough dog fight you didn't see him playing to his to his uh, advantages he got inside the telephone booth he didn't have to Kenny Porter even said he could have made the fight easier on himself. So you consider a rematch. Errol Spence does not have to go in there and brawl. And even if he did, he already proved that if he brawl with him, he could still beat him brawling a brawler. So even if he had to change his mindset, like if you compared it to Apollo Creed in part two, Apollo, T Apollo Creed went in there and tried to out brawl the brawler the second fight and it lost him the fight. Errol Spence out brought the brawler in the first fight. So if he, if he, even if he went into a second fight, he don't have to even prove the brawling tactic. He can go in there and box him. Right? He can go in there and box him and keep him at the end of his jab and use his height and, and, and use his boxing skills 
and change the outcome of the fight. Logically, if he fought Errol, if he fought Sean Porter the second time around, he could take the first three, three, four, five rounds easy just boxing. You're going to get some black backlash of some people accusing you of, of, of running and being afraid. But at the end of the day, people are going to always say what they're going to say. The same people, if Errol Spence rematched Sean Porter and decided not to brawl with him and just outbox him, he would outbox him clean. For a set, hypothetically, if he outboxed him clean and just beat him on points, for 12 rounds if he did that you know how many people are going to say Errol Spence was afraid to brawl he took the safe route and he started to box and the only reason why he won the second fight is because he he boxed him and he and he fought scared the same people said that would say something like that is the same energy of the people that said that Tyson Fury beat Deontay Wilder by outboxing him so the same thing that applies for Tyson Fury would not apply to Errol Spence if Errol Spence boxes then he's a coward and he's scared but if Tyson Fury boxes uh, Deontay Wilder he just outboxed him and he won the fight even though he got knocked down twice knocked out damn near in the 12th round it'd be the same people that would say oh Errol Spence is scared now and that's why he's trying to box him but it'd be the same type of mentality that it'd be like, well, Tyson Fury, he exposed Deontay Wilder. He he outboxed him. He showed Deontay Wilder don't have no real skill. So who cares what people going to say? Because people going to say what they going to say. The reality is, if they fought in a rematch, Errol Spence still has the majority of the advantages. He beat Sean Porter brawling with Sean Porter. So logically would say if he if he even decided to take half the fight in box Sean Porter, just like Kenny Porter said, he would make that fight easier on himself. So if they rematch, let him rematch. I salute it. Take my hat off to both of those guys. I would prefer to see Errol Spence fight Terrence Bud Crawford, but I would love to see him fight Danny Garcia. Keith Thurman, Manny Pacquiao, rematch Sean Porter, and then if you wanted to fight Terrence Bud Crawford, what you gonna do about it? Nothing. Respect it. Nocturnal thoughts. Salute to the real, death to the fake. I'm out. Peace.